Amalodimo Amawale Amadibo Amawale Hello there, so I welcome you to my YouTube channel, Connect React. And on this channel, we get to give you news and political updates regarding what is happening in this country, in Africa and to the parts of the world. We are also going to be giving you societal happenings and gist. Just do well to subscribe to this YouTube channel today. It is totally free. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. So guys, I actually stumbled across one of these old videos. I didn't even know a prof had once been invited to our dear nation to nurture our world politicians and to free them from their non-stop corruption. The look on their faces, it was as if God had arrested their souls when the man was speaking because he said a lot and I have the full speech for you. Just do well to stay connected to the end of this video in order to watch it. Deep down, they all felt what the man said, but at the same time, <laughs> they knew what they were going to do. The name of the man is Patrick Lumumba. He's a Kenyan lawyer and activist, also a director of the Kenya School of Law and served as the director of the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission from July 2010 to August 2017. But let me ask you this question. Do you think corruption can ever be eradicated in Nigeria? Watch and tell us at the comment section and don't forget to like this video as you are watching. I'm very happy to be invited to join you today to speak about the subject of corruption. It is a subject that is evergreen in Africa and one that deserves attention at all times because corruption has undermined and continues to undermine development in Africa. It is true that corruption is to be found in every society, but the reason why corruption in Africa must receive greater attention is because corruption in Africa continues to be pervasive and pernicious to the detriment of the continent. Many African countries would have realized great economic and political growth, but such growth has been stunted because of corruption. Today, many of us know that the 50-odd African countries combined have a GDP that is lower than many European countries such as Germany, Spain, France, and many others. And this is so because of corruption talking about the impact of corruption and governance in Africa, the Liberian president with whom I agree, Johnson Salif, says that Africa is poor because it is poorly governed. And those who have looked at Africa for a long time, including the famous South African who has advised Rwandese government Greg Mills in his book Why Africa is Poor and What Africa Can Do About It have asserted that Africans are poor because their leaders have chosen that path. It therefore gladdens me that I have been invited to speak in the presence of elected leaders. It has also been said that one of the reasons why corruption thrives in Africa is because Africa is in the business of canonizing thieves and sanctifying and celebrating the wrong people while it vilifies her good men and women. 
It has also been argued that Africans are in the business of punishing small thieves and electing the big ones into public office. And that is why, therefore, when one is asked to speak about corruption in Africa, one must ask the question why it is that Africa has never succeeded in this fight. I can't agree more that there is a place for legislation in Africa. But those who have observed Africa have also said that the problem of the fight against corruption in Africa is not the shortage of legislation. In fact, Africa has forests of legislation which are honored in breach. Which begs the question, what is the problem? The problem in Africa is that we have succeeded rather paradoxically to create an environment which allows thieving and thievery to blossom and thrive. We have created an environment that ensures that our men and women who engage in graft occupy positions of power and influence. And therefore, when one is asked to ask what is it that other African countries have done in the fight against corruption which we can emulate, one must remind oneself that there have been a number of countries in Africa which have succeeded in the fight against corruption. And the reason why they have succeeded is because the leadership in those countries have demonstrated by what and did that they mean what they say in the fight against corruption. As I said a few minutes before, African countries are quick to sign international instruments that speak against corruption. If you look at the countries which were the first to ratify the UN Convention Against Corruption, African countries were in the forefront. If you look at the countries which were quick to adopt protocols that speak against corruption, African countries were in the forefront, and Nigeria was never far behind. If you look at the countries which adopted legislation against corruption, it is African countries. In other words, African countries have the inclination to sign anything on sight without doing what those things require and demand of them. So, it is not legislation in and of themselves. It is something else. It is the culture that we have evolved over the years in Africa of celebrating ill-gotten wealth. It is not the shortage of political pronouncements in many African countries. Those who occupy political leadership when they seek political office will invariably say that we are going to fight against corruption. But many times in the fight against corruption, their understanding of it is that they should appear to be fighting corruption without actually fighting corruption. So the question that we must ask ourselves what must we do, we who have the privilege and honor of serving our countries in the positions to which we have been elected in order to salvage our countries from the chains of graft? There are those Afro-pessimists who hold the view that Africa will perpetually and eternally be mired in the muck and mire of corruption. But the truth is that African countries have demonstrated that it can be done. Countries such as Botswana have demonstrated that when there is a committed leadership at the very top, corruption can be fought and can be fought successfully. Countries such as Mauritius have demonstrated that corruption can be fought. Countries such as Rwanda 
have demonstrated that corruption can be fought. And what they have demonstrated is that corruption is so serious a business that it cannot be left to the political class. They have demonstrated that corruption is so serious and ill that it cannot be conducted, the fight against corruption cannot be conducted on the basis of equivocal and vague political pronouncements or technicalities of procedure. They have demonstrated that sometimes there must be a deliberate conspiracy of institutions in order to fight corruption. They have demonstrated that the executive must positively and creatively conspire with the legislature and that the legislature must conspire with the judiciary not to undermine those institutions but to strengthen those institutions. And I hold the view that it can be done and it must be done because if it is not done, many African countries will never realize their potential. It has also been demonstrated by those countries that in order to fight corruption, there must be collaboration of a continental nature. And it is not lost on me that the African Union has brought to pass the African Convention for Combating and Preventing Corruption which is a continental instrument that allows African countries to participate in the fight against corruption through collaboration. And it can be done through regional efforts. In the ECOWAS region, the ECOWAS environment provides an opportunity for Nigeria and the countries in this part of the world, an opportunity to engage in the fight against corruption in a positive manner. It has never been lost on me that the day Nigeria rises, that is the day Africa rises. You may not know, but one out of every five Africans is a Nigerian. And the reason, in my view, why Africa continues to totter in the manner that it does is because Nigeria has never realized our potential. The day Nigeria realizes our potential, that is the day that Africa will rise. So we are here today also to remind Nigeria that it must play her real leadership role, not only in this region but in Africa, by demonstrating by what and did that Nigeria will be in the forefront in the fight against corruption. And it's not only at the continental level that Nigeria must demonstrate this, Nigeria must also demonstrate her leadership position in the world. The United Nations Convention Against Corruption provides several opportunities which can be exploited by members states, including Nigeria, to ensure that funds that have been ill-gotten are repatriated and the men and women who engage in such unconscionable and harmful behavior are punished in accordance with the law that the world may know that if you reap where you have not sown there are consequences to it it is also important to create an environment that is hostile for people to participate in corruption there was a time when i believe that procurement laws in and of themselves were magic ones which upon being waived would eliminate corruption in the civil service. But over the years I've come to realize that procurement laws only allows people to steal in accordance with the law. And that therefore do not be under the impression that laws in and of themselves will solve the problem. As a young boy, I read the great Nigerian writer, Chinua Achebe, who said that since men have learned to shoot without, miss without missing, Eneke the bird has learned to fly without patching. So we who are here, must remember that when we are enacting laws regarding procurement, sometimes we do so in a manner that provides an opportunity for bureaucrats to steal 
in a manner that lends a veneer of legality to their illegal activities. The quality of laws that we enact are therefore very important. We must also as a country look at the lifestyle of the individuals who engage in public office. How is it that in Africa, when an individual whom we knew to be a pauper is appointed as a public official, on whom we knew to be a pauper is elected, permit me and forgive me at once members of Senate and members of the House of Representatives, that no sooner have you set foot in the Senate or the House of Representatives than you become a millionaire and you begin to live as if money was not a problem. If it was so easy, why aren't all of us so rich? The privatization of public wealth without consequence is something that we must frown, and frown upon. And that is why lifestyle audits are important and I urge you to enact legislation that will require Nigerians that before you build a house as a public servant, you must show us the source of your funds. You must tell us where you got the money. And if you did that, you'd be amazed that those who build mansions will be reduced by 99%. And corruption is something that also undermines democracy. That is the tragedy of corruption. And it has now been demonstrated that in the countries where corruption has been fought and fought successfully, democracy also thrives. I've already indicated to you countries such as Mauritius, and Botswana, which are the only two countries in Africa ever to have had budget surpluses because the leaders in those countries have been in the forefront in the fight against corruption. The other thing that we must do is to create public awareness. And public awareness is not merely to tell the people that corruption is the wrong thing. People know. When people go to church on Saturdays and Sundays, they are told that corruption is a bad thing. When they go to the mosques on Friday, they are told that corruption is a bad thing. What we must do is to ensure that there is behavior change. And throughout history, it has been demonstrated that men only change their behavior when there is a threat of pain. The pain of deprivation or the pain of imprisonment. We must therefore ensure that those who engage in corruption are punished and punished in accordance with the law. I was also asked to organize jointly with you as I now do. What are the challenges that stand in our way in the fight against corruption? In a multi-ethnic, multi-national country such as Nigeria, as indeed are many African countries, the fight against corruption is even more difficult. A friend of mine, in an attempt to rationalize corruption, once said, how is it that fish can swim in the ocean without water getting into its mouth? And I said, what do you mean? He said, when you work in the public service, how is it that you cannot take a little out of the public service? And I told him, you are not a fish, and if you are a fish, close your mouth when you are swimming. And he also told me, how can you be tethered around a tree and you do not graze on the grass that is around there? I said, you are not a cow, and even if you are, remember that the grass does not belong to you. There is no shortage of attempts at rationalizing corruption in Africa. And there is no way in which we are going to fight corruption without changing people's behavior. My prescription is that we must realize that those who engage in corruption belong to a different cadre of people and that they must never be owned. The culture in many African countries that if a thief is from your tribe, you say, yes, we know he's a thief, but he's our thief. Master, this ownership of thieves.
because they come from our ethnic groups or they come from our social class or they come from our religious circle is one of the things that undermines the fight against corruption in many parts of Africa. We must therefore create an environment where those who engage in graft do not have places of refuge in their ethnic groups. We must not create an environment where when we punish people because they have engaged in graft, we then give them protection because they come from our tribes. It is a problem that is going to persist in a country such as Nigeria, but it is only through the legislature which comprises people from all parts of Nigeria that we can ensure that these thieves are not given the oxygen to breathe so that they can suffocate through their iniquities. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight against corruption is one which one can talk about for a long time. But when one is speaking in the president of the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, one ought to measure one's words. One only ought to say the things that ought to be said. And therefore, as I draw to the conclusion of my presentation, there are a number of things that I think are critical in the fight against corruption in the manner that it has been demonstrated in different parts of the world. The first thing that we must do is that we must strengthen institutions. Institutions are at the very heart of the sustained fight against corruption. You are President His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari is on the right path. He has given us a clarion call. He is now recognized the world over as one of the chief fighters against corruption. But I can tell you that no matter how well intentioned he is, he is not going to succeed unless you support him as the legislators. He is not going to succeed unless the institutions are strengthened and in any event, the maximum he can stay in office is two terms. And let me tell you one thing about those who engage in graft. They have the patience that is amazing. If they can sleep quietly for eight years, only to emerge as greater monsters in the ninth year. And therefore, what we must do is to create institutions that defy time. Those institutions must be institutions that are recognized by the law. If it is the institution of parliament, it must stay strong. If it is the institution of the judiciary, it must be purged of the men and women who engage in graft. If it is the institution of the executive, it must be strengthened. If it is the EFCC, it must be strengthened. If it is the civil society, it must be strengthened. It is only institutions that defy time that will ensure that we succeed in the fight against corruption. The second thing that we must do is that we must have a raft of laws which ensure that those who want to do things that are detrimental to the society are punished and punished swiftly in accordance with the law and they are not allowed to be unleashed to the unsuspecting public. And I am happy to note that our representatives from Europe are here for a long time, Africans who stole from Africa had safe heavens in Europe. It is my joy that even Europe now is beginning to close the doors. Under the World Bank, we have mutual legal assistance. If we can ensure that those avenues are closed so that they cannot keep their money away. What amazes me is that these individuals kept their ill-gotten wealth in numbered accounts. Not their wives, not their husbands knew. So that when they died, this money was enjoyed by other civilizations. We must now ensure that those who serve in the public service do not hold accounts outside of this country. If they love this country so much that they serve her, why is it that they do not have faith in having their money in this part of the world? These are things that can only be done if we have sound laws. The third thing is that we must look at our education system. What are we teaching in the 143 universities in Nigeria? What are we teaching in our high schools? 
Are we teaching our young men and women that you can be celebrated simply because you have acquired wealth without its source being given? We must interrogate our, uh, our curriculum and we must involve everybody, religious leaders, traditional leaders, because how can it be that amongst the various peoples of Nigeria, you would not allow your daughter or your son to marry a thief who has stolen a goat, but a thief who has stolen Naira is celebrated. We must give the goat and the Naira equal value because he's a thief, is a thief. <laughs> Lastly, I have no doubt in my mind that we must introduce hygiene in our politics. The day we introduce hygiene in our politics so that our men and women who seek public office are men and women of integrity. So that our men and women who seek public office finance their campaigns in a clean manner. We will never succeed. I've always been amazed in many African countries that a person who upon being elected if he is a Nigerian for five years will earn no more than 30 million Naira is prepared to spend 1 billion Naira to go into public office there must be something that they see that we the electorate do not see and that thing is the ability and the opportunity to privatize public wealth. The day we introduce hygiene in our politics, the day we deal with the financing of our politics, that is the day that we will begin to sanitize our country, and that is the day that Nigeria will begin to be a great country. I look forward to the day, therefore, that corruption will be an exception rather than the rule. I look forward to the day, therefore, when the laws that we are enacting will be laws that will be observed. I look forward to the day, therefore, when we will have created an environment where we can prevent corruption. I look forward to the day, therefore, when national owners in Nigeria will be given to men and women who deserve it, not those who have bought them. I look forward to the day, therefore, when our young men and women in institutions of higher learning will have as their natural instinct, the instinct to do good. I look forward to the day, therefore, when the EFCC may be abolished because there are no more corrupt Nigerians. I look forward to the day, therefore, when all these laws will have their pride of place. I look forward to the day, therefore, when the protocols of Africa and when the laws of Africa will be in the museum of history because corruption will have been eliminated. I look forward to the day when we will be able to say like the man in the Bible corruption where is the sting? Corruption where is the sting? God bless. Thanks for staying connected to the end of this video. I really appreciate you. So at the comment section like I said do you think corruption can ever be eradicated in our dear nation share your honest thoughts at the comment section because corruption 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 though it starts with each and every one of us but looking at the way things are going do you think it can ever be eradicated or probably you have an idea or ways that we can counter it in our dear nation kindly share it with us at the comment section if you enjoyed this video kindly hit the subscribe button and subscribe today and make sure you remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss any updates whenever i drop or post another update thank you very much for watching please help us to like this video and share to other different platforms so that more people can get to watch it well i've got another video for you and i hope you enjoy it too see you soon